Hey, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're going to review a movie that Bob thinks is barely a science fiction movie. <laughs> Kimmy. It is barely a science fiction it, movie. But it is. It takes place slightly in the future, and that's all that's necessary. It's a science fiction <laughs> movie. So it, 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 it's, but it's a very good movie. It's you know streaming on HBO Max. And uh, it's a story about a, a, like a gig worker who's you know, working for a company to correct the user interface with a... Uh, a, a device like Alexa, Alexa you know, or Google Home, and the device is named Kimmy. You say, Kimmy, turn on the lights. You know, so it's basically like a, a runs your house and you can have it play music and whatever. Um, and so when people interact with it and the interaction fails because Kimmy didn't understand the command, she reviews the log and makes a correction, says that was, a, that was an expletive or they, you know, whatever, you didn't disambiguate these two words, and, and that's what she does. Um, so, and you learn very early on what happens is that she hears a, because she's listening in to people talking to their Kimmy, and she hears what she thinks is a crime. Yeah, domestic violence. A domestic violence, and that's what sets off the plot. So we're going to give you a, a quick overview, or a quick review without spoilers, then we'll let you know when the spoilers are coming. So soft spoilers at first, we have to have to say certain things. The, to me, when I saw the for the first like five ten minutes of the of the um, the show, I didn't I, I only had a sort of a vague idea what it was about. But then when I when I started watching, I'm like, this is Rear Window. Oh right? yeah, without a oh, doubt. Yeah. I mean, it's not a remake of Rear Window, but it is definitely inspired by in, it. An homage or something. Yeah. So, you, you know, she lives in an apartment in a city. What, the wall that she's working next to, lots of windows, and right across the street is another apartment building with windows. So she's looking at multiple people, you know, across the street in, mm -hmm. in, in their apartments. That's totally rear window. Um, that's that's mostly where the similarities end. But it's also that, like in Rear Window, um, Jimmy Stewart, who's the you know the main character, he sees what he thinks is a crime that he's piecing together from the information he's mm -hmm. getting. You know, he's seeing things happen and it kind of, you can sort of sh piece these, the little bits of information he has together and say, that guy just killed his wife and buried her in the garden, you yeah. know? And then you don't know it while you're watching it, the movie, if it's true or not, you know, you have to wait and wait for it to play out. Very similarly, you know, the main character in this story hears what she thinks may have been a crime and you don't know, yeah. you know, at first if that what what really is going on, and and sort of that plays it that plays itself out. So what what I liked about Kimmy was that there was a lot of layers to it, mm -hmm. and I thought it was a very very clever way to, to to discuss you know the pandemic, the 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 what the pandemic did to our lives, the idea that we're all kind of living in rear window now, where we're sort of watching the world and, from and interacting with the world from home and through digital media, through online. There's a lot of clever ways in which I think, you know, Steven Soderbergh was a director, did a great job. Yeah. I think that they, the camera work was fantastic. One thing that immediately stood out for me, I don't know if you guys had the same experience, when she put the headphones on or put her earbuds in, the background noise all went away. Mm -hmm. It was silence. Like she's in, now in her bubble. Sure. The outside world goes away, and she can only hear what she's playing yeah. on the computer. So a lot of a lot of great effects like that. So just the viewing, the cinematic experience, I thought was fantastic. The storytelling, I wasn't you know it was a little predictable because you know it's it's Rear Window and there's lots of other damsel in distress at home kind of movies where you kind of know how it's going to play out. So it wasn't a shocking you know, uh, plot in that way. It was really more how the story was told. It was a thriller. It was a thriller. And and the ending was like the big payoff. It was yeah. a great ending. Won't tell you what happened until we get to the spoiler version of it. But um, but if it feels a little slow at first, stick it out. It's a short yeah. movie. It's, it's a short, short, it's good. It's less than 90, 90 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it was it's very fast. quick. It's fast. It's tight. Well, there's like, not, a, like, not an ounce of fat in this movie. Oh, you're totally right. right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he, this, this no, it was masterfully crafted. Job. Like Oof. most thrillers, like it takes a little while to t establish everything yeah. that's going on. So you got to give it a chance because, you know, in the beginning, you're really just kind of watching what's happening over the shoulder of someone as they're in their home. And that's kind of the point. Yeah, it is the point. Yeah, you're right. So... We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit when we get to the spoiler version. Zoe Kravitz did a fantastic great, job. Great job. So she, she's playing a character who is, suffers from anxiety. 
um, I think panic disorder and agoraphobia. agoraphobia. So she can't leave the home. Mm-hmm. And when when at one point, you know, it's not a big shocker, she does leave because she has to. Um, the you know then the, the cinematography changes, the lighting, everything changes. And it was I thought one of the best cinematic representations of someone's internal anxiety yeah, that mm-hmm. I've ever seen in yes. cinema. Don't you think? Yeah. Like she's hugging the wall and hunched over and you felt her anxiety. You yeah. absolutely felt her anxiety. That was really, I think a lot of that came from her though. She did a fantastic totally, yeah. job. I mean, but it, it was that and it was the, the dir- directing yeah, and yeah, the yeah, cinematography. Right I mean, you can't, you can't minimize that. So we recommend that you see it. It was definitely good. I mean, if you like thrillers, it was good. And again, yeah, the ending had a really good, a good climax and payoff to it. Uh, but now let's slip into the spoilers part. All right, so spoiler alert. I, when I, when I, all right, so I took a film class on Stanley Kubrick and, and Alfred Hitchcock. So Alfred Hitchcock obviously directed Rear Window. Then there's a lot of crossover here. So what we, what we would say, like as a, as a film you know, analyst, we would say this movie was about spectatorship, right? Mm-hmm. And what that means is that you know, it's based on the idea that people – like to be seen, right? We all want to be seen, but we also like to watch other things happen, Mm -hmm. uh, watch other people and watch drama. But ideally, and this is like the whole movie going experience is we're safe Mm -hmm. in the theater or in our home and we're watching this dramatic, dangerous story play out on the screen, but we are safely separated from it, right? So what happens in Rear Window, what happens in Kimmy, is those barriers break down. You're watching something out there, and then it invades your home. Right. It draws you into the story. Uh, and so that's that's what this story is about. And, and uh, that level of the story, I absolutely loved. It was a really, uh, I think, new take on that whole spectatorship theme of, of these films. And using like fully exploiting modern technology, like the whole Zoom thing, the whole you know listening to audio, mm-hmm. having relationships and conversations with people only like over the computer. Um, her you know agoraphobia, like she had to, she was ensconced in her home and she could do everything from home. And when she tried to leave the first time, yeah. it was very important that they did that. Yeah. Yeah. And they had to show you what, what her even thinking about leaving her house did to her psychologically. Like it literally put her on the floor. Right. Which I thought was very good. It was very important to, to show that because... She failed. She could not leave the home. At the, yeah. And then when she does leave... Yeah, you know how hard it was it for It was her. altruistic of her to leave. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And it was very difficult for her to leave. And then when she's out there, like, and I, and I totally agree with you, Steve. Yeah. When she's out in the wild... It made it a much more scary situation, mm-hmm. even though to, to most people it wouldn't be a scary thing. But but feeling it through her lens, mm-hmm. seeing it yeah. through her lens was really it's like an interesting. Alien planet she was on. Yes, yeah. really and then dramatic. she really is in peril. Oh yeah, you know, not that her anxiety is like fully realized. She's out. Not only is she feeling anxious because she's just outside her apartment, she starts to realize that she's not safe. That people are coming to get her. Yeah, you know, and they they you know, get her all the way back to her home, you know? She, so She brings it, man. It invades, Don't mess with Zoe. Oh, yeah. It invades her home. So that, again, that's, that gets back to the spectatorship thing. But then, of course, yeah, then, you know, the ending is fantastic. You know, when, when she, she's a very smart person, obviously, very, yeah. the character, because I love, yeah. I love intelligently written characters, intelligent characters. And, you know, the, and, the, and the bad guys, we're dumb. <laughs> they were not. Yeah, they, they were, were not. They were bright. Not the sharpest cocky. knife in the drawer. They were for cocky. Sure. They, were they were not. They, they were not very bright. Yeah, they, they were thugs. Yeah. And and she she gets the better of them in a fantastic way. The the payoff yeah. is great. The great was, yeah. was really well done. My big takeaway was she had an awesome studio apartment. Yeah. Oh, she did. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite part. She had. A, I was like, I would live in there. That's an awesome space. That but she I think lived that's in. part. That was part of the <laughs> point. <laughs> Right, that it was a, it wasn't awesome space. You want to just live there and stay yeah, there. You yeah. never have to go outside because you could have everything brought to you. And that's yeah. we lived our life that way for yeah, two sure. years in a way. And it was very, you were very. She, you know, the officer was wearing a mask, uh, except for the very last. She also was like obsessively compulsively washing yes. her hands. Uh, she was obsessively washing her teeth. So there was also just a lot of. She she was anxious and obsessive compulsive. Yeah, like, you know, definitely lots that, of meds. Did you read some of those meds? Yeah, did, what, what were they? She was having antidepressants, yeah, anti-anxiety. Yeah, antidepressant and anxiety medications. And then, mm. um, you know, she gets a toothache because she, probably because she's over brushing her teeth and she gets a little abscess there probably, but she's oh, too wow. anxious to go to the dentist. Uh, but she, that you know, becomes a plot element as well. But let's say it. 
The best part of this movie was definitely when she got that nail gun. Oh, the nail gun to the head. It was oh, amazing. It was amazing. It, I mean, that part that, of the, that, was... that that made a lot of the slowness in the beginning completely worth it. Like you had it, you, you needed that in order to build <laughs> that up. That the payoff scene. is worth it. The payoff that was, was a great. Payoff. And then having her neighbor swoop in, like he is oh a God. he is a fellow close in. Yes, right. He he was another agoraphobic type guy. You know, and he was watching her. Yes. And you think he's a creep. Like, damn, oh, totally. he's extra creepy, man. Yeah. What's he doing? You know, you get the binoculars in your yeah. window. I mean, that's extra. He was a peeping Tom. Again, yeah. just like her, he left his place to help her. Yes. He saw her out and it, said, something's wrong. Yep. And he came to help her. It was her. wonderful. So he really wasn't Same a villain guy, at really, all. Like, yeah, they flipped his character. Which yeah. Is, which, love that part. And I yeah. love the two of them working with each other. Like, he's mortally, I don't know if he was mortally wounded, but he was very yeah, dangerously like, wounded. Yeah. And she's beat up, and you know she's half drugged still, yeah. and everything, and and they pulled it off. I thought that was just yeah, really was super, cool. And then you know she gets off. transformed by the experience. So the, in the last scene, you know she's outside with her boyfriend, or and she doesn't have a mask on. And she's getting think, that coffee. She's, yeah, but she's still white. She still, you know, does yeah. the sanitizer. She didn't fully get out of it. So well, I think that was well, very it deliberate. Like, do we ever, it's you know, we, pandemic. Yeah. It's like, yes, you see, <laughs> it yeah, doesn't it's like, leave you. It doesn't leave you. So I thought that was very deliberate. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, definitely made deliberate. the transition, but not quite. She still did the thing with the hands. Yeah. Um, so it was a good little movie. I think very emblematic of our time, something that we're going through and, you know, weaving in again, these sort of classic Hitchco Hitchcockian themes. Yeah. Um, I think you know, Soderbergh did a great job. It's, you know, I, and again, low budget, no yeah. special no effects, special effects really. really. No, no yeah. lasers, no explosions. Really. You know, most of it takes place in an apartment. Could have helped. It, <laughs> but, that, you know, that, and it was good, to show you. good acting, good storytelling. That's yeah. the core of any That is, it really movie. is. If you could be entertained by a movie yep. today with no special effects, really yep. just about good writing, good character, character development. I mean, that is the core of every movie. We say it all the time. Like, everything else is great yeah, to yeah. have, but you have to have the core yep. has to be there. And, you know, I, I just thought it was really cool minutes. that, you know, we were... We're watching one character for ninety-five percent of the movie. You're you're in the in the mind of one character. Yeah. That that takes very good writing to pull off. Absolutely. So I did I did like the movie. Good point. Um, you know another another cool thing about this movie, like Steve said, is it does ring true to a lot of us because we went through the pandemic, so mm. we get we get her agoraphobia in a way that mo you wouldn't have three years ago. Yeah. You wouldn't that, get this, this movie character. would not have yeah. made sense almost three years ago. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah, it wouldn't have made cultural sense. You know, I, I totally get it. Yeah, so um, I like more movies like this. Again, it was, it was. I got the feeling it was just like slightly in the future with the, the Kimmy technology, like the next step of the yeah, of the Alexa month. kind of thing. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't revolutionary, but there was. You get the feeling there was some AI, more AI in there, and it was just yeah, a little, a little bit. The technology was a little bit more embedded, you know, I think in, in our lives, but. Um, but but it was I thought it was you know uh, a really a fantastic little movie. And you can see this on HBO Max right now if you're interested. Yeah. And guys, thanks again for watching another episode of Alpha Quadrant yes. Six. If you like this show and you want to see some more episodes, you can go to alphaquadrant6.com. Or if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash alpha quadrant and then number six. Guys, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.